Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Ghislaine Maxwell continues to rack up the L's. Not only was she unsuccessful in trying to get the sealed documents to remain that way, not only was she unsuccessful in trying to get bail, well, now the court is telling her and her law team that they better not ID survivors in this case. So you could just tag that on as another L for Ghislaine Maxwell and the shitbirds that run with her. And it's glorious to see, isn't it? For so long, the shoe was on the other foot. For so long, the rulings were going the other way. But now, as things start to progress, and as the real story begins to come to light and more people are made aware of what's going on, I am telling you, folks, these floodgates most assuredly are going to open. Now, Ghislaine Maxwell, we all knew what she was, right? Everybody following this case, all of us sleuthing around, we all knew exactly what she was. And that's why I never shied away from calling her that here on this podcast or correcting articles when they called her a socialite or Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend. Because we all knew just exactly what kind of monster we were dealing with, even if the legacy media refused to do their job, refused to make the general population aware of what occurred. Well, now that shit's all out of the bag, boys and girls. I can't tell you how many messages I woke up to from friends of mine who have just a basic knowledge of what's going on in this case. Woke up to emails and inquiries and questions about the inner workings of Jeffrey Epstein's inner circle now. People are getting interested. And that's because of all of you out there. All of the, the posts, the non, the non-stop putting it in people's faces and making them be aware of what occurred. So I think that we're making some serious headway when it comes to making this a mainstream issue. And at the end of the day, folks, when I first started this podcast all the way back in la- last August and really got busy op- in October, that's all that I wanted to do was make people aware of what occurred and then let them make their own decisions, come to their own conclusions when they have all of the evidence presented to them. Not just bits and pieces, not a piece from this smear merchant to try and smear that person or that person smearing this person. I try to keep this podcast grounded in as much reality as possible. And like I always say with this case, I don't think we need to add on salacious nonsense, right? There's plenty of it right here. The facts that hit you right in the face, there is plenty of that right here. And I think it's important that we try and stay focused on the actual perpetrators that were involved in the leadership roles and in the abuse of these girls. I think that's where we start and we let the investigation bloom from there, right? Because these enablers, no matter how much you try and stick it to them, no matter how much you try and say that they were abusing girls, if nobody comes forward and says that Bill Clinton was abusing girls on that island, well... We have him there. We have him uh, involved as in being uh, around when these orgies were occurring. But you can't stick him as a somebody who has took part in the abusing of the girls from the evidence we have so far, right? Of course not. But we can get them when it comes to the financials. And I think that that is an overlooked part of this case. I think that these enablers, that's what they're truly worried about. Besides the people that have been named by Virginia or the other survivors as partaking in the abuse, I think these enablers all understand that these financial ties, well, they're ties that bind. And when you're caught up in financials the way these people are, there is no wiggling their way off the hook. So that's what I try and focus on here. I try and keep the focus on the people who were named as abusers of Virginia, people who have played an intricate and important role in building the enterprise and going after those people with laser-like focus. Now, once this blooms a little bit more, 
Well, people are going to start to understand that this was not just some sort of child sex trafficking ring, right? The Unsullied will start to understand that this was also a blackmail ring run by some of the most powerful people in the intelligence world. And as you all know, I am not one of these. I think it's the Mossad. I don't believe that. Now, I believe that the Mossad, they were running the operation as far as the assets on the ground. But if anyone thinks that the CIA didn't have their fingerprints all over it, didn't give them the nod of approval and offer some sort of logistical support for this 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 uh, honey trap. Well, I, I think that's a naive point of view because as powerful as the Mossad is in their sphere, there is nobody as powerful or as devious as the CIA of the United States of America. And as this all comes to light, it's going to be a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. But if we lay the case out correctly and we build the bridges, well, if we build it, they will come. And I think it's a, it's a process where you have to lay out all of the facts for people and then let them come to that conclusion on their own. I, you know, I I think that the facts are pretty clear what we're dealing with here. And I think that anybody who comes into this case with an open mind and takes a look at all of the factors surrounding it, well, they have no choice but to come to the conclusion that this was a huge, large, gigantic operation that spanned continents and it involved some of the most powerful people in the whole entire world. I don't think that there's any denying that at this point. So we're going to continue to build those tracks. We're going to continue to lay those rail lines. And eventually, we're going to get connected from point A to point B. And everything is going to fall directly into focus. All right, so... We were talking a little bit about Ghislaine Maxwell racking up the L's. So that's what our article is about today. Our article is from the USA Today. It was originally run by the Associated Press. The headline, Elaine Maxwell's lawyers warned not to ID child sex abuse survivors, as if they should even be need- needed to be warned about that. It shows you the sort of tactics that they plan on using, and it's not unexpected, right? You know they're going to go to the mattresses. You know that they're going to fight dirty. They're going to do anything in their power to try and throw shade and to try and make it look like these girls are lying. That's their job. And it's up to the prosecutors and the judge to make sure that that's all done within the parameters of the law. And that is what we're seeing right here and right now with this ruling. The judge presiding over the criminal case against a British socialite, still a British socialite. Didn't I just get done talking about how she is not a British socialite? They still are calling her that. They're still scared to call her what she is. A child molester, a child abuser, a sick ass, a disgusting scumbag, a bipedal serpent, somebody that deserves jail for the rest of her life, bologna sandwiches and hard bread that break her gross-ass veneers. How about that for a label? Charged with recruiting teenage girls for financier, oh, and, and that's what Epstein is, a financier, AP, you sure are hitting it out of the park here. How about child molester, pedophile, money launderer, abuser, and all-around draconian sick bastard. I think that's a better label for him. Said Friday that her attorneys are not permitted to publicly identify accusers, even if they've spoken in a public forum. This is a huge slapdown for Ghislaine Maxwell, folks. It is huge. And guess what? They had control of the narrative for decades. Decades. And they poisoned people's minds about these survivors. They were able to get away with it. Dushowitz going on every single news station that would have him and running his nonsense, slandering these girls. Well, the worm is turned. The narrative has been snatched. And now, well, now the predators have become the prey. Not all accusations or public statements are equal. U.S. District Judge Allison J. Nathan wrote in her ruling in the case facing Ghislaine Maxwell. 
Deciding to participate in or contribute to a criminal investigation or prosecution is a far different matter than simply making a public statement relating to Miss Maxwell or Jeffrey Epstein, particularly since such a statement might have occurred decades ago and have no relevance to the charges in this case. What they wanted was basically a a, a gag order dropped over all of the survivors, right? They wanted to make it out so the survivors once again had to keep quiet, just like they've had to keep quiet for all of these years. Well, that shit is over, the cat is out of the bag, and you are not hushing anybody anymore, okay? She said the woman still maintain a significant privacy interest that must be safeguarded. Yeah, you think? We're still dealing with some sick and powerful sons of bitches, folks, who are still free. The co-conspirators, the enablers, other people that have stuff to hide. You really think that these girls uh, are, are, aren't at risk here? You think that they have nothing on the line by coming out and speaking so bravely about these bipedal serpents? Hell yeah, they have things to worry about. These people are sick, folks. These people are dangerous. Prosecutors had asked Nathan to block Maxwell's lawyer from publicly identifying the women unless they identified themselves as participants in the criminal case. Otherwise, prosecutors said the women may be harassed or intimidated and become reluctant to cooperate with the government. That's not out of that, that out of the realm of possibility. Just listen to what the survivors have said previously. Listen to what people like Maria Farmer have said. Listen to what Virginia said or Sarah Ransom or any number of the other survivors. These aren't people that were not dangerous. These weren't people that were afraid to shy away from threats. That was part of their arsenal. That was part of the process. Nathan's order came hours after newly unsealed court documents provided a fresh glimpse into a fierce civil court fight between Maxwell, who was Epstein's former girlfriend, co-conspirator, child molester, all-around scumbag, and one of the women accused the couple and one of the women who accused the couple of sexual abuse. The documents released late Thursday were now were from a now settled defamation lawsuit filed by one of Epstein's survivors, Virginia Roberts. Roberts claimed in the suit and other litigation that Maxwell recruited her in 2000 to be a sexual servant to Epstein. She said the couple subsequently pressured her into having sex with numerous rich or notable men, including Britain's Prince Andrew, a.k.a. the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, U.S. politicians, wealthy entrepreneurs, a famous scientist, and a fashion designer. Boy, sounds like just the kind of people that scumbag sick bastard Jeffrey Epstein would be palling around with, doesn't it? And notice how USA Today and the AP shies away from still mentioning the names. You want to talk? Let's talk about some of the names, okay? U.S. politicians. Let's talk about it, okay? George Mitchell, Bill Richardson, Bill Clinton. All right, let's see what's next they got here. Wealthy entrepreneurs. All right, we can give you some of that too since the USA Today won't. Les Wexner, Tom Pritzker, Glenn Dubin, Jess Staley, Leon Black, a famous scientist, well, Marvin Minsky might fit that bill, huh, folks? And a fashion designer. Well, there's several of those. We'll just run with Les Wexner again, just to be safe, huh? Look, folks, the point of the matter is this. The legacy media is still scared to do its job. There's a reason that all of you are listening to me, just your run-of-the-mill moron, reporting on this case. That's because we can't trust the legacy media to shoot us straight. We can't trust them to not be in bed with these bipedal serpents. And that's just the unfortunate fact. Among the newly... Excuse me, Maxwell and all of the accused men have denied those allegations for years. Yeah, of course they have. Have they denied it under oath, though? That's the real question. Anybody can release their canned denials. Oh, have your crisis team write it up. In reality, we all know the score. Among the newly released documents were emails Maxwell and Epstein exchanged in January 2015 when Roberts' allegations were getting a new round of media attention. Now remember, according to Maxwell, in the hearing... She had no contact with Epstein for at least a decade 
Well, we know that's bullshit. We know that's a lie. And we know that her, 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 uh, law team BS'd us about that, right? And we also know, which is very interesting, in 2015, that Prince Andrew, aka the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, also sent Ghislaine Maxwell an email asking about Virginia. So, seems kind of odd that the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family would have so many questions with his good friend Ghislaine Maxwell about a girl that he supposedly doesn't even remember, huh? See what I mean, folks? They think you're stupid. They truly believe that you are too dumb to put these pieces together. Well, I have news for all of them. They are wrong. One email sent from Epstein's email address but written in Maxwell's voice appeared to be a draft statement or set of talking points for Maxwell to use in defending herself. It said she had been the target of false allegations of impropriety and offensive behavior that I abhor and have never been party to. And these emails are are, uh, available for you to check out. I've posted the links on my Twitter page. It was obviously Epstein coaching her. We called it out right away when we got those emails last night and I posted them. It was an obvious, obvious Epstein coaching her. But what's more, it proves the conspiracy, folks. This proves the RICO case. Responding to a Maxwell email a few days later, Epstein wrote, You have done nothing wrong, and I would urge you to start acting like it. He suggested she go outside and hold her head high, not as an escaping convict. Yeah, great advice from old Jeffy, huh? Yeah, go out and hold your head up high there, Ghislaine. You did nothing wrong. You only abused a bunch of kids. You dumb, stupid morons. You idiots. You jackanapes. Epstein killed himself, allegedly, last summer while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Maxwell was was recently arrested on federal charges that she recruited at least three girls, including one as young as 14, for Epstein to sexually abuse in the 90s. Prosecutors said she also joined in the abuse. Not just prosecutors, survivors have said that, okay? And guess what? From where we've come to where we are, The circumstantial evidence enough is damning. Now imagine that all of that circumstantial evidence that we have had is being corroborated now by these documents. Funny that. Maxwell is jailed awaiting trial in New York. Many of the documents unsealed by the court Thursday had been available publicly before. Remember, this is what I talked about. For those of us who have been sleuthing around and covering this, we knew that there wasn't going to be anything too explosive in these the the, the first round of these dumps, right? It's the deposition that everybody really wants to dig their teeth into. But the fact remains, these are receipts, folks. This is important. And this shows people who might just be getting involved in this case that this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not some bullshit 4chan nonsense BS, okay? This has never been a conspiracy theory. This has always been a cover-up. They included a deposition in which Roberts described the alleged abuse and also answered questions about errors she made previously in telling her story, including originally telling a court she was 15 when she met Epstein when records show she was at least a year older. Roberts, over the years, has told her story to the FBI, but no charges were brought based on her allegations, and she is not one of the three alleged survivors in the current criminal case against Maxwell. And I think that's significant, because that does not mean that she won't be eventually. That just means right now, with these Hold'em charges, that she is not. I think a lot of people get confused with this sort of situation, and I get it. It's confusing as hell, right? If I hadn't been following federal cases for years because of my interest in organized crime, I would be very confused as well. But this is pretty typical in cases like this. As they begin to gain steam, you see things change and you see other charges added. Two documents that were not released as scheduled Thursday were depositions Maxwell gave in the civil lawsuit in 2016. U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska had ordered them released, but Maxwell's lawyers appealed a ruling to the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Her lawyers said they should be blocked because she now faces criminal charges. Well, I don't think that the Second Circuit Court of Appeals is going to acquiesce to that request. 
Am I going to make a prediction one way or the other? No, because at the end of the day, it is still the federal government we're dealing with, and we know that they're a bunch of ninnies for the most part. So I'm not going to make a prediction one way or the other, but what I will say, as I stated last night, when a a court sets precedent in their very courtroom, it is rare that they go against their own ruling. But this is one of those cases that's odd, right? This is something that we're not used to dealing with. These concurrent um, criminal uh, suit and the civil suit running at the same time, it's, you know, it's definitely a, a, a bit odd, right? Something that that's not common. So it's up to the prosecutors to do the right thing. It's up to the prosecutors to make sure that they have all of their I's dotted and their T's crossed, their ducks in a row, and that they are ready to bite down on their mouthpiece and go to war with these people. Because at the end of the day, folks, when all is said and done and the dust clears, one thing is for sure. The worm has most certainly turned and the predators have become the prey. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All right, everybody. All of the links that pertain to this episode can be found in the description box and to everybody who has donated to the GoFundMe account. Thank you very much. Those funds are going to come in handy when this trial starts and I bring my Italian ass to New York for the duration. We'll be back later on with some more, folks. I hope you all have an amazing start to your weekend.